It's theCUBE, covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Back to Boston, everybody. We are here live at the HPE Big Data Conference. Hashtag, seize the data. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Tom Mag is here, he's the Vice President of Business Development at Spirant, a customer analytics and customer experience analytics company. Welcome to theCUBE, good to see yeah, you. Well, thank you, yeah, thanks for inviting me. Actually, you're a 100 talk. plus year old, or no, not quite 100 <laughs> years old, right? But uh, I don't yeah, know, Spiron 80 years old. Yeah, has a long, long old. history yeah, company, starting out testing in Testing company, uh, but you, you came in through the customer experience analytics side of the business. That's correct, yes. So, so uh, yeah, Spiron has a long history, starting out with, uh, in the 1920s, with uh, um, installing you know, line equipment on poles for electric service. Uh, most recently, they've, they've morphed into concentrating on test analytics across the board, but primarily on communication service providers. And then three years ago, um, Spiron purchased uh, DAX Technologies, which is a company I came in with that does customer experience management analytics. So they wanted to move from the lab environment where they're doing testing, making sure, um, you know, pre-launch, making sure that communication service providers can launch high quality services to actually getting into the live network and being able to monitor that to ensure the continuation of uh, the quality. What's that live. like working for a company that's been around that long, that's, that started in, in, a, in, a, in an area that's completely different than what you do, the culture, what's the culture like that can, can allow a company to, to thrive for that many years? Well, it's innovation, right? I mean, it's being able to, um, and you know, when we came in, when I said they moved to test analytics, that was probably about 30 years ago. So, and the culture had uh, moved from that, you know, the early days to uh, more of the high tech. Uh -huh. uh, but they do have uh, um, the ability to innovate, bring in new customers, and go in a direction uh, that the industry is going to, uh, you know, obviously maximize go, profits. Go, go where the puck will be. Yes, exactly. Uh, 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 Dave and I had a uh, call a couple of days ago. He was driving into uh, to the conference, and and I was on my my uh, office line, and the, the call dropped. I think three times during that during that half hour call. One of the things you're doing is trying to measure customer experience, uh, things like call call quality, but you're not. But customers don't necessarily tell you when there's a customer experience problem. How do you how do you determine that? Oh, that's a, you know excellent question. So when your call dropped, um, basically what our our solution does it looks at customer experience from a network quality point of view. So uh, when we deploy at a, uh, a service provider, we're collecting all of the metrics around that that call. How quickly did it get set up? Did it stay up? the drop, why, so we can determine if you are impacted from a quality point of view, but those are all objective measures, right? How do we know if it's you know, one drop call a week or an hour is going to cause you to be dissatisfied as a customer? Yeah. So we take those objective measurements and then um, we, we pull in that data and you know, we can be collecting 500 to 1,000 uh, events per subscriber per day, take 100 million subscribers, that's 50 billion to 100 billion messages a day, that's where the big data comes in, that's where we leverage Vertica, the ability to pull that data in and analyze it, aggregate it. Um, but we take those objective measures and we baseline them using Vertica R and other analytics against subjective information about your customer experience. And examples of subjective information, I mean it could be a customer survey. I mean if you called up and complained, um, that's an important piece of information. But a lot of customers we find out you know, don't want to, it's painful to, you know, dial 611 and go through 50 prompts and, uh, you know, you're not sure if you're being heard or not. We you know how it that. is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're bored in the car and you yeah. want some, uh, if you're driving and you want some, uh, somebody to talk to, maybe that work. But what we do is look at churn. I mean, that's a, you know, strong indication. So you cor so correlate you, to churn. Exactly. Yeah. So if you churn within those events occurring, uh, that's NPS. Um, also social media too, unstructured data, we can pull that in. If you're complaining, we can relate that to a particular subscriber. Um, we can then formulate um, a relationship between what we call KPIs, key performance indicators. So a key performance indicator would be your, your percent successful calls. So we can formulate a relationship between that and the subjective measures. Mm -hmm. you know, how often do people churn um, and what value of, how important is you know, call drop? to customer churn. So we use Vertica, we use R to be able to come up with a attribute importance. And typically operators, they could be measuring 50, 100 different KPIs, 
But what we discovered when it comes down to it is it's five or ten of them that really make a difference. And using the analytics, we could tell you know, which five of those ten, five or ten of those make the difference, and then be able to weight those. So we put it back into our, what we call a QOE quality of experience formula. We could use those weights to try to accurately best fit you know, a prediction of your quality of experience uh, versus what the network's showing. Okay, so Tom, I'm a service provider. I like what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. How do I engage with you? Oh, um, so, uh, so our model, we have a couple of different models. Um, one is uh, you know, pure on-site software, where you would engage with us, we would uh, analyze. I mean, one of the keys, I mentioned collecting 500 to 1,000 pieces of uh, data per uh, call transaction. Usually it's in multiple systems. So is, if you're a service provider, you probably have the data. You probably have a lot of this data, but it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we would come in and we would analyze, you know, where is the data that we need from a customer experience management point of view? How do we go about you know, obtaining that, pulling that in? Perhaps some of it's sitting in a Hadoop data lake. Vertica, perfect, we have a Hadoop connector where we can pull the data. We're not going to replicate the data. What we're going to do is we're going to pull that data, aggregate it, and look for the hot spots in that and just locally process the aggregations. So we're not replicating when that. When you say pull it in, you mean, you mean inspect? Inspect, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pull it in, run it through Vertica, do the aggregates, which, so, you know, out of the you know, 50 billion records a day, you're not going to run that through R. What right. we're going to do is we're going to take and aggregate and come up with KPIs and KQIs and QOE from that, those records, to uh, then run it through uh, predictive analytics. So you, you I would, Require an appliance, for example, from you, or a service from you? Yeah, so two things. Uh, one model what is, uh, what we have is a perpetual license where you would acquire the software. Um, we would uh, um, deploy that in conjunction with uh, HP hardware, or we're just you know open, open vendor point of view. Um, and you would run that on-site locally. The other model we have is more of a uh, services, which is a uh, annual license model, where you can buy that on a uh, subscription basis. Okay. Um, typically with the volume of data, unless you're a smaller service provider, usually the solution is hosted within your firewall, also because of privacy. Um, we are, we're analyzing this purely from a network, you know, customer experience quality point of view, um, but there is obviously information in the data that's, that's private nature, right? Who you are, who you were calling, all that. We don't need to know that, we just need to know whether it dropped or not. So a lot of times that's kept in-house. Um, it could, you know, in some, some of the small deployments we have done this, it could be cloud-based, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you just want to keep the aggregates maybe across, if you have multiple properties, you want to keep them in one place and analyze and compare how, you know, one country is comparing to another. And those would be abstracted aggregates that wouldn't have privacy data that could be uh, pushed up to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Telecom companies gather an incredible amount of data, it seems to me. I mean, mm -hmm. every bit that goes over a uh, that goes over the, the air or over the wire, they, they technically can, can gather that. Um, what do you see these companies doing that, that's interesting? New things that telecom companies are doing that's interesting with data. We see a lot of in, uh, interest in, in getting into advertising now. You know, uh, Verizon wants to be a, uh, a media company. Mm -hmm. um, are, are you seeing a, a whole new business models emerging as, uh, out of all this data? Yeah, so, so our focus has been from a uh, again, network quality point of view, customer experience, understanding impacted customers, impacted revenue, but there's a whole marketing angle. So we see lots and lots of requests coming in from a marketing point of view. And a key question there, again, goes to privacy, what opt in, opt out. But let's say you take that off the table. You can analyze the data and determine um, you know, what, what services, over the top services, subscribers are using, um, what the, the performance of that is, you know, as well as um, looking at uh, and categorizing each, each type of subscriber. So there's a wealth of information from a marketing point of view that's available in the data, because when it comes down to it, you know, every, every website you go to, uh, again, we're looking at that from a network performance point of view, but every website you go to is, uh, can be captured and can be analyzed. How, how are people making the business case? Is it, is it mostly focused on churn reduction? Um, you mentioned NPS, so take us through the business case. Yeah, sure, sure. So, I, well, let me give you an example of one of our use cases where we uh, you know, did a deployment for a major carrier here in the U.S. Um, this, they were um, very focused on quality. They had what they call a tier three center. So you would call in and you would get a customer care agent. Um, and if you know, it's any issue with uh, um, your device setup, they would walk you through that. But if it happened to be network quality related, you're dropping calls, your data is slow, they would typically create a ticket and that would go over to a, uh, what they call a tier three center. And uh, they were getting about a million of these a month. And 
they, again, with the data silos, so not having it all in one place and processed in one place, they'd have to look through five to 10 systems to try to resolve your individual problem. And that, we, we did time and motion study that would take an hour, hour and a half. So we put our solution in, we pull all the data together from actually 30 different systems in this case, um, so that as soon as the ticket's created, we're already analyzing that. So when they pull up the ticket, the information's there as far as what the ticket's about, analyze every record with flagged ones that failed, um, and then look at it across resources. Is it an issue, like a, a, a good example is, if you're having a problem and you're at a particular cell site, are all the other subscribers at that cell site having a problem? Well, if it is, it's probably cell site related. If it's only you, it's probably related to something you're doing and something different. So we have a rules engine that actually processes and makes recommendations on uh, how to, to resolve that. So it took it from an hour, hour and a half down to uh, five or 10 minutes. And you can multiply that out, you know, if a million times, you know, cost of labor and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, saving, you know, 30, 30 million plus a year. That's telephone numbers, right. right. So there's a productivity That's a productivity, right yeah. That's okay. customer satisfaction. So another, another and, example and, is, and, right. yeah, device returns is a big, to, for, for a operator to take back a device, it costs anywhere from 100 to $200 to, uh, um, basically reverse logistics and get a new device out to you. Um, and we've had, we've been working with operators where they do, you know, a million device returns a, a month. So a million times you multiply it out, and it turns out anywhere from 20 to 40% of those are what no trouble found. It wasn't an issue with the device, it's something that, you know, you know potentially it was a network issue, but you're, you're, you're a customer, you're going to, your issue, you're dropping calls, you're just going to yell until you, your device replaced. So we actually use the R and predictive analytics from Vertica to, to predict and make recommendations on whether that's a valid return. It looks like it's a device related issue, you've got to return it, or it's not. It's something that can be you know, proven to be a network issue to reduce device returns. And you can see the economics there. If you can reduce, if you find half of those no trouble found, you know, it, it's tens of millions of dollars of savings. Right, okay, so um, let's talk about the the case study, if you will, of, of okay. sort of how you work with Vertica and what you're doing. Uh, paint a picture of what you guys are doing internally, like what's your stack look like? I mean, what's the solution look like? How sure, are you sure. using you know, Vertica in your delivery? Yeah, so we have a three-tiered stack. So the, the first tier is where we're going to ingest the data. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use Vertica, um, previously, um, you know, before we, we um, added Vertica as one of our options, um, we had another database uh, vendor that we were working with, a large one, beginning with O. Um, and one of the issues was the ability to load the data in there that quickly, aggregate it. Um, there's, there's two keys to our customer. One is latency, and that's when the network event, when you drop your call, how long does it take before we recognize that and can make recommendations on how to resolve that? That's latency. And the other is, when we make the recommendations, how quickly, when you go and ask, you know, phone number one, two, three, how quickly does that analysis come back on the screen? Your response time. Mm -hmm. And the goal on the latency is to get that as uh, near real time as possible. Um, and uh, the response time, the responsiveness, you know, if you're a customer care rep, you have somebody on the phone, you want that information up there within you know, under five seconds. So one of the keys that uh, Vertico enabled us from a performance point of view is to be able to ingest that data, get it quickly in a database, and reduce that latency. Um, and so we, we pull the data, we, we ingest it, but the key is not, it's like a needle in a haystack. The 50 billion records, you know, aren't going to tell you anything. It's really aggregations, the hot spots, all of that, and that's where uh, Vertica with live aggregate uh, projections came into play. It allowed us to quickly aggregate the data. So we can aggregate it into KPIs, KQIs, and QOE, and then find the hot spots. Because obviously the quicker you find, and this is proactive, the quicker you find that hot spot that might be affecting, you know, five or 10 or 100 different subscribers, the quicker you resolve that, the quicker you are going to be uh, avoiding calls from everybody else that would have been impacted had right. you not resolved that. Right. And that, that's key. The, the next thing would be predictive, and that's, that's where we're moving more in the future model, predicting, be able to predict your problem um, before it actually occurs to anybody and, and resolve that. Like anticipatory action. And exactly. Good, yeah. okay. Um, what do you got going on at the show here? You got you know, things going on at the expo? You got talking to customers? Are you yeah, we're here, you know, we're here uh, talking to uh, customers. We noticed there's a lot of uh, service providers here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a team of engineers here that are just taking in the new capabilities to, uh, you know, from a future point of view, predictive to, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, Haven, exec, you know, things along those lines to be able to uh, augment our capabilities with uh, those Vertica features. Excellent, all right. In. Tom, we'll leave it there. So thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Oh, best of thank luck you. going forward. Appreciate all right, it. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from Boston. Be right back. We are here to win championships. We are here to win races. In Formula E, 